In this video, I will be talking about the stairway that we built in our 1923 home building project. And for those of you who are not familiar with it, I will put a link to a playlist that will have all of the videos attached to it for this particular home. And even some of the videos if I make in the future about different modifications to the home will also be included in that video also. So here we have a stairway that fits in a tight space. It has nine inch treads, eight inch risers, and I squeezed this baby in here. I made everything I could work about it. And for those of you wondering why I didn't add a couple of more steps at the top or maybe throw a few more steps into the landing or even make the stair steps a little smaller, well then hopefully by the time you're done watching the video it will make sense. So here we have three steps going down to a landing with a diagonal step and then going down the rest of the way. 1 by 10 or 1 by 12 stringers with 1 by treads and no risers. And remember, all of this lumber is thicker. This is actually a 2 inch by 6 inch, not an inch and a half by 5 and a half. And the same thing with the stringers. This is a 1 inch by 12 inch. This is a 1 inch by 9 inch, obviously, since it's a 9 inch step. Even though this could have been a little wider, and they might have made them a little wider also during that period of construction. The closet, this would have had some type of lath and plaster over it, and I doubt if it would have been open. I've seen plenty of stairways like this built where the risers aren't closed, and it has some type of a ceiling underneath it with a bunch of trash down here that you can't get out sometimes, or areas that are hard to clean. The landing, I just kind of assembled this how I thought it would have been assembled back in that time. And here we have some one by sheathing sitting on top of a wall with some joist and sheathing sitting on top to make our next step or our angled step. And of course the one by spans from here to here. And this wouldn't have been tongue and groove either. This would have just been square edge sheathing. But I did something different and cut a notch or a dado, kind of a slot in here, so that the sheathing could sit in the notch and have something to support it at the same time, creating some type of a header here for this opening. And this header is also notched into the 2 by wall framing stud, something that probably wouldn't be approved today, but uh, back then you could probably do what you wanted because there were no building inspectors. And of course the stringers are stopping here, kind of protruding into this area a little bit to make the stairs work out a little bit better. As a space saving feature for the stairway, you could have moved the stairway back and pushed it into the kitchen a little bit or furred out this wall if you wanted it to be flat but I'm guessing they would have simply plastered over this or added some type of wood maybe some one by here to block this area off and then simply just painted the bottom of this and then painted the wood and then painted this and then lath and plastered the rest of this and another thing I need to point out is that I have this stopping here however the stringer could have extended past here to support the floor sheathing if you needed it to and of course this one here could have extended past and you could have just had the ceiling come up here and then kind of die into here and then over without really creating a headroom problem because you're kind of going to walk in the center of this area, come in the door in the center and then come up the stairs this way on the lower floor and I think you would still have enough headroom there. And then just kind of shaped the studs here to provide us with a little more headroom going up the stairs that are below this. The stringers space the wall framing. Let's go ahead and take a look at the door opening. And I'm guessing that the stringers would have butted up against the wall and not up against the door jam or the door jam trim if you were to finish the door trim out on the inside of this. Take a look at the other side, same thing. Stringer coming down tight up against the framing stud. And of course the step back a little further. However, we could have brought this into the door jam. If the door was going to stop about here, we could have brought this step in a little bit further if we needed a little extra room. But sometimes when you start doing stuff like that, you bring the tread into the door jam and it doesn't look very aesthetically pleasing. So you got to keep that in mind when you are searching for space. 
on stairs that don't have enough room. Next step, let's go ahead and remove some of the walls to give you an idea of what the stairway would look like or a better idea. Taking a section out, sometimes we can't see everything. Let's kind of work our way around. Voila, let's go ahead and throw the walls back in there. We don't have the floor joist in here. You can kind of see how some of it would work out. And now let's go ahead and put the floor joist in there. And then add the sheathing. Coming around here, come down the stairs. Another view of it there. One by stringers, one by treads. And of course the wall sitting on top of the sheathing. And that brings us to the end of this video. So there is our stairway for a home built in 1923. And as always, if you have any comments, leave them in the comment area. Questions can be emailed to me or left in the comment area. And I will answer them as soon as possible.